Today, we are going to be going over another tier list, esports logos specifically, so logos in gaming. I felt like if they needed a little bit of context, if they've gone through a rebrand before, I've included the previous logo so we can look at that as well. We are going to be reviewing just the logos themselves, not the work of these organizations. So in advance, no hard feelings or you're welcome if I review the logo and rank it highly. So let's get started. I think the first thing is addressing the elephant in the room, and that is the company that I work for, 100 Thieves. I do have some comments about the logo, maybe based on how often I've used it. The 100 Thieves logo, I think is very iconic. If we talk about the cultural significance, I think it's very memorable, recognizable, especially compared to a lot of these logos you see on here. It is not a perfect logo. There is a little bit of imbalance in the negative space on the top and bottom. So it's very bottom heavy. And because of that, it's a little bit difficult to use for graphics. That's why you'll see, we'll actually put the logo in a box as a way to balance that imperfection and negative space on the top. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't get fired for this. I still think it's a great logo, best logo in the world. I love my job and would hate to be unemployed. So up next, Fnatic. I spoke about this one in the last tier list, but I think it being a gaming logo and an iconic one at that, we might as well brush up on it again. I pretty much like all of the changes made. So the simplified shapes, I like the more aggressive color used. And overall, I think the rebrand was a big success and it's still recognizable as Fnatic. In the previous tier list, I believe I put it in A tier and I feel just as comfortable putting it in A tier again. Up next, we're talking about G2. It has some really cool features to it. I really appreciate the red in the eye, which gives it, it brings it to life essentially, right? And it gives it personality. There are some balance issues, I think, with the level of detail that is included in this logo. So a lot of different stroke widths, a lot of different shapes going in different directions. And for that reason, I could maybe see it becoming an issue similar to 100 Thieves with imbalance and using this for designs on its own, maybe in B tier. In my head, G2 continues to represent some sort of bug, not a samurai. That might be one thing to keep in mind between the A tier logos and the B tier logo. When I zoom out, it starts getting harder to read, whereas the A tier logos are still clear. Moving into Team Liquid. So very simplified shapes. It's easy to see what it is which is a seahorse. I think it's simplified, it's easy to use. And because of that, I think it's very flexible. It being a mascot logo and the way I feel about it, maybe being design-wise a bit stronger than G2, I feel pretty comfortable putting it in A tier. Let's see this, it's a land horse. <laughs> Sounds cool, never really a good uh, descriptor of your logo. <laughs> so it is a land horse then. Let's, uh, uh okay. So up next, we're talking about the Team Liquid logo, and it's another mascot similar to G2, and it's based off of a horse, Envious. So a very old logo that has not been changed. I think there's a lot of things going right for this logo in that it's very easy to use, and you'll see that as a theme because a lot of esports is based on social media, I do think the logo itself maybe has some balance issues when you look at the different weights. So I've seen people do redesigns of the Envious logo where they kind of just fixed up some of the stroke widths so they had a system to them rather than just being random shapes. But I do think it could go through some fixes. I would put it in the same B tier ranking as G2 because they both have those issues. They're almost there in A tier, but they have a couple things that pull them back. Back again to haunt me, the Hellraisers logo. I've also talked about this one in one of the previous tier lists. It is very clearly to me in D tier, especially compared to the old logo, which had so much personality. I still have yet to find someone who has told me that they would put it above D tier. Virtus Pro, yet again, another mascot. I thought it would be useful to include the old version and the new version, which I know sparked a little bit of controversy. I was pleasantly surprised with it. One of the old issues that I had with this logo was, and maybe you see it too, was kind of the mohawk. I think a lot of things were simplified and done 
the right way. There's a lot of detail that maybe doesn't need to be there. The thinness of the teeth makes it feel a little bit imbalanced from the weight of the other strokes here. They now have that width kind of tapering from this point here. I love the old one. I think it just had a few issues to fix. And I think in the new version, they fix those things. So I feel really comfortable putting Virtus Pro in A tier as well. Moving into probably one of the most iconic logos in all of gaming and esports, FaZe Clan created by Ferox way back in the day. Back then, it was like a super iconic, memorable logo, just as it is now. So I think the fact that it's held up since the very beginning has maybe something to say of its kind of design. Obviously, there's some imbalance in the negative spacing here. And there's this tension on this left side with the F because it feels too close together. But with there being a slight flaw to it, I am actually going to put it in A tier. Up next, the second most iconic and maybe debatable because I know that phase and optic go way back. If I were to compare with the phase logo, I always thought of the optic logo as maybe being a little bit weaker. The issues when you have these linking shapes and the inconsistencies in the negative spacing pretty much all around the entire logo. The tightness here at the bottom with the G, you have a lot of openness here on this right side. The shape of it is super easy to work with and I have respect to Optic for doing that. I would put it in B tier. Again, this is not a reflection of how I feel about the brand or their designs because I think Optic's design team is one of the best in esports. So let's talk about T1. And I think when you compare it to their old logo, I like that they brought some details that make it reminiscent of what it was. They've done a lot of things with the new logo that I think are done correctly. The T1 logo, I still find some issues with, and the first thing I can see immediately is the typography and the distance between the T and the one being a little bit unusual in that curve, not really making a lot of sense. It doesn't add up to me with the negative spacing you see on the other details of the logo. When I'm looking at the A tier logos here, I'm actually more convinced that it would be in B tier because when I look at the shapes, there's just a little too much imbalance going on. This fits this slot more and we'll say that it would maybe be an in-between. So let's talk a little bit about Dignitas, a brand that I might be a little bit biased on because I helped worked on it last year. They rebranded to something completely different, which was an owl that didn't make a lot of sense to people. And after the backlash, they decided to rebrand and revert back to their logo. The team that I was working with, with Paper Crowns, got to work on it and try to reinvent it but still bring back that nostalgia. So you can see compared to the old one, we just kind of fixed up some balancing issues like the eyes kind of look lopsided. I think that it's an improvement from the old logo. And if I compare it to mascots like Liquid and Virtus Pro, I would put them on the same level. Moving into NRG, and this is a little bit of a unique one. So you can see this is the original logo. A lot of issues going on here that need to be fixed. They went off with this really trendy idea that was like super popular at the time. They ended up reverting to a logo that got rid of the globe and got rid of that 90s feel to it. Along the way here, they maybe lost some of their personality. I don't think I would list it as poorly as Hellraisers, which might be on its own in the D tier, but I think I would put it in C tier just because I at least see some usability for it. TSM, the T, the S, the M, some people might say that it's out of order, but I think when you have the context of the brand's name next to it, which you always will, you at least know that it is a T, an S, and an M. The shapes are balanced for the most part, but have issues, especially with the openness of the S and how cramped the M is. Throws it off, maybe a little bit too much. I don't think it would fall in line with energy. So I'm going to put it in B tier alongside. I mean, Envy and TSM, you could say have a lot of similarities that would make sense to group them together. Moving into a brand that is maybe a little bit less popular, but still got my attention is Chaos Esports Club. I'm a little bit disappointed because when I saw the original logo, I was like, I fell in love with it almost immediately. They came out with this new one, but I already see a lot of issues being this kind of weird detail. So like they simplified the logo in every aspect except for the tongue of the snake and that level of detail feels really really inconsistent right if you zoom out far enough you can't really even recognize the snake and it more just looks like a target 
I would probably have put the old one in S tier. I feel like I have to put it in B tier. I'm, I'm very much considering it putting it in C because if I compare it to these other logos, like by itself as a standalone piece, it's not great. So I'm going to move it down to C tier. Cloud9, one of my favorite logos, my favorite gaming logo, maybe of all time. I think they pretty much do everything right. It feels extremely balanced. I think the idea behind the logo itself, so the concept is executed perfectly, like it's a cloud using nines to create that form. I think a lot of people kind of know where I'm heading with this, but I think Cloud9 is going to be my first S tier logo, a logo that in my eyes will stand the test of time for as long as it needs to. So up next, I kind of intentionally put these two logos next to each other, but we're going to be talking about CLG, which in my eyes seems almost like an inferior version of Cloud9's logo, which obviously is an intentional. They both have different meanings. It doesn't really have the type of personality you get from these really iconic, super memorable logos. And even the CLG part, which I think is what it's based off of, is spelling out those letters, is really hard to read. Maybe it has a deeper meaning that I'm not aware of. If I have it lined up with everything in B tier, I might actually feel more comfortable putting it with these. Luminosity Gaming, one of my most dreaded logos when I have to use it for graphics. It does not have an official black and white version. It has to be used like this. I didn't include the logo type, but if we're talking about the whole brand, the logo type is one of the strangest I've ever seen in esports, and I do not think it matches. Just for some context, this is what their logo type looks like. I think the styles just clash too much. And when I see these two things together, the only thing that really pairs them is the color and nothing else. And I think that the gaming is literally in papyrus because of how difficult it is to use for me. In my eyes, it's between B and C. Every time we go up against Luminosity, I'm like, I do not want to use this logo. I'm going to put it in C tier. Talking about Sentinels, a logo that a lot of my friends work with who are in Sentinels. And in my eyes, Sentinels has one of the best design teams in all of esports. I think it has a lot of potential to work with as a system. It is memorable in the shapes of this icon, but it's not really distracting. Like they're able to bring their brand to life with this really simple mark. So I think the simplicity of it makes it easier to use. I really enjoy what they've been able to do with it. And I think as a mark, it feels balanced and there's not a whole lot I would change with it. So I'm going to put it in A tier. Houston Outlaws, I believe this is for Overwatch League. The concept behind these logos is one of my favorites. So I really appreciate the attention to detail, even like in the eyes with those pieces of the guns. And the, I think they just blended the two ideas together perfectly. I think the star adds a little bit more just to the top. It balances it out. And despite it having so much detail, as soon as you zoom out and you lose those gun shapes, you still get the shape of the skull. So I think the execution on this is one of my favorite, maybe one of my favorite of all time, but it's really close. Hopefully you guys agree with me. I know it's not as well known as a brand, but Houston Outlaws, their logo is one of my favorites and I'm going to put it in S tier. To execute on something that takes two concepts and blends them together is one of the hardest things that you can do as a logo designer. Ending it off with Soar Gaming, a request from my friend Crude, who is the owner of Soar currently. If you were back in Call of Duty, like. 2012, this would be standing as one of the most iconic logos of gaming at that time. Maybe one of the biggest issues is that people, I think most obviously see this as a two. Conceptually, that kind of knocks it down a little bit. I'll add really quickly, the reason why this is two S's is because the company or brand used to be called Soar Sniping. The test of time, it's lasted for a while, I think is still very impressive. So I'm going to leave it in B tier. I'm like amazed that these old school logos are still working today though. It's really cool seeing these hold up to logos that were created like, you know, a few years ago. Just to do a quick recap. So in S tier, we have Cloud9, Houston Outlaws. A tier, we have 100 Thieves, Fnatic, Liquid, Virtus Pro, FaZe Clan, Dignitas, and Sentinels. B tier, we have G2, Envy, Optic Gaming, T1, TSM, CLG, and Soar Gaming. C tier, we have NRG, Chaos Esports Club, and Luminosity Gaming. And in D tier, at the very bottom, we have Hellraisers. Doing this review turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would 
would be. There was so much bias that I was trying to push myself away from. So if you see logos that you don't agree with, there's a good chance that I've probably worked with those logos before. And that bias is kind of overshadowing the actual thoughts that I have on the logo itself. It was tough, but we got through it. So there we go.